Hello, welcome to Reformation and Revival Now. This is Brother Kevin, um, and I just want to bring you some things that will be such a blessing to you. If you want to engage in this spiritual assignment with me uh, concerning uh, the fall of ISIS, uh, I want to give you uh, some teaching that will be a blessing to you. If you uh, are experienced with spiritual warfare and this is too much of a problem for you, then maybe, hey, you don't need this. But if this is kind of new to you, then please listen. These are things that I, I've learned, so some of them the hard way, um, but I believe it'll be a blessing to you. Hope, which we're going to be talking about, there's not a lot of teaching on it. I don't know why, except for that Satan was at work trying to really, I've heard so many negative things about hope. I heard, well, you can't do anything with hope. Hope is just wishing. Well, Bible hope is not wishing. Bible hope is the heavenly vision or the blessed hope. I mean, you got your eyes on the prize when heavenly hope is in motion. But let's go on to number three, hope. Hope is often defined as favorable expectation, and that is true. However, it's been my experience that hope is more than that. It's the blueprint for faith. Hebrews 11.1. 1. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. This is probably one of my most favorite sections to teach and preach on simply because it's been omitted. And it will probably bring balance to your faith. Those of you who have struggled with the Word of Faith movement and uh, maybe some of the people, maybe charismatic prosperity, let me share with you something that will bring balance to faith. This section I'm sharing with you on hope. So hope gives faith something to do, in other words. Proverbs 29, 18. Where there is no vision, and I'm using that vision in the way I use hope. Where there is no vision, the people perish. But he that keepeth the law, happy is he. Mm -hmm. This is the chief reason why so many churches are not effective because they have never let the word of God produce any vision through hope. Romans 8, 24, 25. For we are saved by hope. Oh, I thought we were saved by faith. We're saved by all of them. We're saved by the love of God. We're saved by faith. And we're saved by hope too. Keep that in mind. For we are saved by hope. But hope that is seen is not hope. So we're not talking about wishing, are we? No, we're not talking about wishing. Okay. But hope that is seen is not hope. For what a man seeth, why doth he yet hope for? But if we hope for that which we see not, then do we with patience wait for it. Spiritual sight does not depend on the natural or the physical. Having hope for what God has shown you will put your faith to work. We do not physically see Jesus, but the spiritual eyes of hope allow us to walk in our salvation by faith. It can be hard, it is often hard to separate the two virtues because it's hard to have one without the other. Romans 15, 13. Now the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing, there they are together, that you may abound in hope through the power of the Holy Ghost. He is called the God of hope, so Bible hope is empowered by the Holy Spirit. It is the helmet of salvation which will protect you against the mind trips of the devil. 2 Corinthians 10, 4 and 5. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God, and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. This is why we say that hope is like a helmet. Now notice, this is talking about imaginations. This is talking about high things, strongholds. It's in the mind. And you're going to see that hope is always in the mind. And the other thing you're going to also find out that faith is always now. Hope is always in the future. That's why you need faith to fulfill the vision of hope. All right. Without the, the helmet of hope, Satan will always say things to you like, it will never work. It's too late for this man. He can never come to Christ, or the demons are too strong. Even though Satan and his demons are unseen spirits, they exist in mindsets, imaginations, intimidations, or anything that oppose righteousness. 
If you can receive this revelation, you can overcome the darkness in spiritual warfare. Satan is going to make his stronghold seem impossible to defeat. Therefore, you must arm yourself with two things that will support your hope. They are a renewed mind through God's word and a purified conscience through the blood of Jesus. Now, we talked about the conscience and the, what the blood does for the conscience. I won't repeat that. Just repeat that. Just go back to 101 and find it and go over it. We're going to spend time talking about the latter. Ephesians 4, um, 22 and 23, that you put off concerning the formal conversation, the old man, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lust, and be ye renewed in the spirit of your mind. Hallelujah. Philippians 2, 5, let this mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus. Notice how this let this mind. So hope has a whole lot to do with your mind, but not just a physical mind. It's a spiritual mind. Because uh, hope is one of the three virtues. So it's not just talking about physical things. It's talking about spiritual things that you see. And by your faith, you watch them in your spiritual walk. And even in your battles come to pass right before your eyes. Romans 12, 2. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. That you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. A soldier must make the scriptures his food and his lifestyle because everything Satan will say and do will be contrary to God's word. He also knows how to use unbelieving believers to speak sweet words of unbelief. An example could be, man, you make this Jesus stuff it's just kind of off, man. You know, you kind of off balance with this warfare mess. Oh, you know, I think you're a fanatic. Here's the tactic that I want you um, to remember. Okay. Um, they will always use, people like this will always use common sense over biblical truth and make you feel like a freak. Many a warrior has backed down because someone they love and respect said to them, you are really off base, my brother. I love people and so do you. But that's why Satan will try to use them if he can to make you drop your weapons. 1 Corinthians 2.14 But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. You may find out that some people are not as spiritual as you made them out to be. They will not discern the Spirit, but they will always put you down. They do this not because they don't love you, but they operate in the natural, and Satan unfortunately can use them. Hebrews 3, 6, but Christ as a son of his over his own house, whose house are we, if we hold fast to con the confidence and the rejoicing of the hope firm to the end. And now you say rejoicing of the hope. This is so much a part of praise and worship. Is that you're worshiping a God you don't see in the physical, but you know that he is your reality and he's more real than what you can see, feel or touch. In spiritual warfare, you must fight against the darkness while operating by love in relationships, or the devil might trick you to remove your helmet. If strife enters through relationships, the conflict could be a psychological battle. Misunderstandings, hurt, betrayal, stress, and anger can be weapons of darkness to make you drop your weapons. Hebrews 6, 18 and 19. By these two immutable things, the promise and the oath in which it was impossible for God to lie that we might have a strong consolation who have fled for the refuge to lay hold upon the hope set before us, which hope we have as an anchor of the soul, both sure and steadfast and which entereth into within the veil. That's just Jesus who entered within that veil. Hope causes the soldier to be anchored in his soul and by it enter into a place of authority and intimacy with Jesus. We are already in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, but hope causes you to be able to take advantage of this in Christ. So check out your P's and find out what do you see? I think hope is pretty obvious. But well, we're going to stop right here and we're going to come back and pick up on this in the, in the second teaching. 
Um, so remember, everything's going to be just below us. Hit that little button there, and it'll drop down, and you'll be able to see some of the same things, most, most of which is word for word. But I'm very excited about bringing um, the hope, uh, bringing this teaching on hope, because I really believe it's the kicker as far as how we walk from day to day. Well, God bless you, and I'll see you in part two of this teaching. Bye-bye.